tonight. Report on two people pleading guilty in a drive-by shooting. And Moses Lake Middle School students are raising money to help children in Haiti. What's happening in sports, Bob? Gonzaga men pick up a big win over St. Mary's and a former Seahawk retires. Here's a quick peek at our Weather Center forecast. Hi everyone, Tess Lee here from the Weather Center. Heavy rainfall along the coastal area and mountains. Snow, heavy snow at times. All that moisture will continue shifting towards the east. I'll have more details for you very soon. I'm Amber Jenks and we have all this and much more on i Fiber one News. From the i Fiber One HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is i Fiber One News, your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own weather center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is i Fiber One News, and it starts now. Two Mattawa residents pleaded guilty to chasing and shooting at a car in Shawana. Carlos Mendoza, a 21-year-old man, pleaded guilty in Grant County Superior Court to assault in the first degree. His co-defendant, Antonio Martinez, an 18-year-old man, pleaded guilty to assault in the second degree. Grant County Superior Court Judge David Estudio sentenced Martinez to eight months in jail. Mendoza has not been sentenced. One of the victims saw the two men at a Shawana gas station when he was buying a cigar. The Grant County Sheriff's Office reported the victim had problems with the two men in the past. The defendants followed the victim's car and Mendoza shot at it twice. When they pulled into the victim's driveway, he continued to fire at the car, hitting it once. The victims ran into the home and the men drove away. The Moses Lake City Council met with representatives from the Colville Tribes on Tuesday night to discuss details of the new gas station to be built on tribal trust land. Reporter Cameron Probert has the details. Moses Lake officials allowed the Confederated Tribes of the Colville Reservation to add three roads to the tribal transportation plan. The tribe wanted to add portions of Wanapum, Lakeshore, and Wapato Drives to the program. The program allows the tribe to seek federal funding to pay for improvements to the roads. Jason Palmer, a senior planner with the tribe, said that they chose the three roads because they were going to directly serve a planned truck stop at the corner of South Wanapum Drive and West Lakeshore Drive. We're hoping it's a success, and if that's the case, we anticipate that there's going to be some improvements needed. The improvements may include widening the road or adding safety features. The addition of the roads to the inventory allows the tribe to assist the city in paying for the improvements. City council members wanted to add Peninsula Drive as well. Palmer said he would have to investigate whether the drive could be added. For I Fiber One News, this is Cameron Prober reporting. Grant County is replacing a bathroom at the fairgrounds. The commissioners agreed to spend $202,000 to purchase a prefabricated bathroom from Spokane-based CXT Incorporated. The company makes bathrooms for the state rest stops. The new building is replacing the present bathroom located next to the East Campground. The restroom is one of the oldest at the fairgrounds. The county is using a $90,000 grant from the Washington State Department of Agriculture to pay for the portion of the cost. The cost of installing the plumbing and electrical systems for the bathroom hasn't been determined yet. The county is facing a June 30th deadline to use the money from the state grant. Endeavor Middle School's leadership class is hosting a fundraiser to help children in Haiti. The Spaghetti for Haiti dinner starts at 5 p.m. on March 24th at the school, located at 6527 Patton Boulevard. Tickets for the dinner are $3 for people 10 years old and older and $2 for children 9 years old and younger. Tickets are available at the door. Leadership teacher Kathleen McFarland stated money from the event helps pay for lunches for the Haitian students. She said they don't have access to regular meals. They attend classes in buildings without heat, water, electricity, or indoor plumbing. She's been to Haiti three times and is returning during spring break to deliver the money raised from the event. For more information, contact McFarland at Endeavor Middle School at 509-766-2667. Now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. 
If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. We'll be right back after this. Here comes Obamacare, the biggest change in the tax code in 20 years. I'm ABC's Richard Davies with today's tax tip. This year's tax season marks the first time you'll be asked for information regarding your health insurance. Eric Smith of the IRS says for most people, this will be a non-issue. For more than three out of four taxpayers, the change will involve just simply checking a box on your return. That box indicates that you had health coverage and most likely through your employer. Others who bought government-backed health care and received a tax credit to help them pay for it will have to account for whether they calculated correctly. Kathy Pickering of H&R Block says there will either be a payment or a refund. When they come in to file their taxes, now they're reconciling how they estimated their income to what their actual income is. The IRS says if you're low income and not required to file a tax return, you don't have to buy health coverage. But for those who could afford it and chose not to, they'll get a fine. With today's tax tip, Richard Davies, ABC News. Now for your I Fiber One News Weather Center forecast. Hi everyone, I'm Tasselin Rodriguez bringing you your local weather. This weather segment is brought to you by Barry Motors, one great place to buy and service a car. Rain chances will continue for this week for much of our state and for tonight. The threat of showers will continue through the morning hours. Conditions will be improving through the late afternoon hours on Thursday. In the meantime, widespread rain and mountain snow, heavy snow at times along the Cascades and heavy rainfall towards the coastal area. And then uh, the threat of showers and that possibility of thunderstorms will continue along the coastal area. Wet and unsettled weather will continue up until the weekend for us here in Efreda. And we woke up with temperatures in the lower 30s. That's around the normal for this time of year. Maximum temperatures slightly below the normal for this time of year in the upper 40s. And definitely not as warm as that record high of 71 degrees. And that was last year in 2015. And that sunset this evening was at 5.56 p.m. And for Moses Lake, very similar temperatures. Temperatures in the upper 40s, that was the maximum temperature for this time of year. And the low was around the normal in the lower 30s. Now, right now, outside your door, temperatures in the mid-40s. Partly cloudy skies, those winds pushing through from the east-southeast up to 11 miles per hour. Showers, heavy rainfall along the coastal area and lots of cloud cover for much of our state. Mountain snow, heavy snow at times along the Cascades and all that moisture will continue shifting towards the east for tonight that threat of showers is likely and it will continue along the inland northwest conditions will be improving for thursday through the afternoon hours for efreda conditions will be improving we're expecting clear skies by 11 a.m., but the threat of showers will continue through that morning commute. And then the threat of showers will continue along the northwest. Mountain snow for the Cascades, lots of cloud cover. And also towards the southeast, that threat of showers will continue. And then a, a quick break through the late afternoon hours on Thursday, but then coming through for Friday and even for the weekend, we're expecting that threat of precipitation. Taking a closer look at those temperatures along the coastal area in the lower 50s with that threat of showers, heavy rainfall at times and towards the Yakima Valley in the upper 50s, towards the upper 40s along the in inland northwest with that threat of precipitation, especially along the southeast. Taking a closer look at those temperatures for our Columbia Basin, maximum temperatures in the mid 50s, lots of cloud cover uh, through the late afternoon hours. We will have a break in precipitation as well as some sunshine will come through for our area here in Efreda. Temperatures will be in the mid 50s for Thursday afternoon. With that threat of precipitation mainly for Friday into the weekend and temperatures will continue around that 50 degree mark within the next few days in the lower 50s for Saturday. Sunday, another threat of precipitation even for the beginning of the work week. We'll be right back with sports. Whether you're looking for a bigger car to support your growing family, a new truck for your business, or something to pull that toy of yours, we've got you covered at Barry Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Efreda. Come see us today and learn why your family, friends, and neighbors buy their cars at Barry. On Basin Street for more than 35 years, and with locations in Moses Lake and Wenatchee, we are one great place to buy a car. Call or click 754-2411 or barrysaves.com. To save some energy, I've used Einstein's mass energy equivalents to design the haptic suits you see in front of you. They will maintain our core body temperature while we completely turn off our heat and air conditioning. 
With the money we save on our Grand PD bill, I'll be expecting that trip to Disneyland this year. You don't need to be a super genius to save energy and money. Visit grantpud.org to learn how. The Zags took the guesswork out of their 18th straight NCAA tournament appearance with a win over the Gales last night. Kyle Wilcher and the Zags held off a St. Mary's 85-75 to claim the West Coast Conference title. Gonzaga was up by seven late in the first half when Wilcher stepped back and drained a three ball from the wing to give the Bulldogs a 37-27 lead at the break. The Zags pushed the score to 51-43 midway through the second when Josh Perkins kicked the ball out to Kyle Dranginis, who knocked down a tray from the corner. St. Mary's got within a bucket 56-54 when Emmett Narr buried a shot from behind the long line. Narr's assist on Joe Rahan's three-pointer made it 66-65 Gonzaga. Wheelchair found Eric McClellan at the top of the key for a three ball to extend the lead to 75-67. Perkins then got the ball to McClellan for an easy dunk, and the Bulldogs came away with the win. Well, former Seahawk quarterback Matt Hasselback, who led Seattle to its first Super Bowl appearance following the 2005 season, announced his retirement this morning. The grizzled veteran played QB for the Green Bay Packers, Seahawks, Tennessee Titans, and the Indianapolis Colts. He threw for 36,638 yards, completing 60% of his passes with 212 touchdowns over his 18-year career. Hasselbeck was traded from Green Bay to Seattle in 2001 and led the Seahawks to six playoff appearances and a Super Bowl in 10 seasons. Hasselbeck will join ESPN as an NFL analyst and will be a part of the Sunday NFL Countdown and the Monday NFL Countdown shows. Well, the Mariners dropped a 4-3 game to the Cleveland Indians Tuesday. The teams were not a two-all after five innings were in the books. Cleveland took the lead in the bottom of the sixth. Ed Lucas singled in Efren Navarro to tie it 3-3. Eric Stemitz got the game-winning RBI in the bottom of the eighth. The M's and the Kansas City Royals go at it today in Cactus League play in Peoria. Taiwan Walker gets the nod on the hill for Seattle. We'll be back after this short break. Well, one thing I knew from being a patient myself was that a dental office is a scary place to come to. And so we wanted everything possible to make sure that our office is a comfortable place for our patients to visit. patients that I have, my clients, have made me a part of this community and we want to give back in every way possible. You don't have to drive to Seattle for exceptional cancer care. Confluence Health's cancer program delivers world-class care close to home. We have a highly experienced oncology team in a state-of-the-art facility and we're a member of the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance, which gives our patients access to world-renowned therapies developed at Fred Hutchinson, the University of Washington Medicine, and Seattle Children's. Together with the SCCA, we're delivering world-class cancer care close to home. Our spotlight story tonight is about how teenagers in Moses Lake can take part in a new program to learn what it takes to be a police officer. Reporter Joe Utter has the details. The Moses Lake Police Department is starting a program for teenagers interested in a career in law enforcement. The Explorer Program, which is part of the Boy Scouts of America's Learning for Life program, is open to teenagers between 15 and 18 years old. Those accepted to the program have to complete the Washington State Law Enforcement Explorer Academy in Yakima. Moses Lake Police Captain Dave Sands explains more about the training involved in the program. So the Explorer Program is really designed to get kids in involved and give them the information of what police officers do, especially those kids that are obviously interested in the law enforcement career, whether that be as a police officer corrections or maybe they decide they want to be an attorney or whatever. Um, and so part of the process, me, program is to um, expose them to just about everything that we do that, that is reasonable. So they'll take classes on criminal justice and criminal law, 
uh, we'll take classes on criminal procedures and patrol procedures where they actually get to do what police work is. Obviously, it's going to be in a controlled environment, and they'll have an opportunity, aside from the classwork, to actually practice those skills and use those skills um, to, to see how you take from the classroom and, and make a practical application. And so, um, and, and part of it, too, is obviously that's, that's the fun part. I mean, that's what they want to get into. Um, that's what they really want to see. Um, and so, you know, we're kind of excited about that piece and how that's going to transition. They'll be able to do ride-alongs with um, officers after they meet certain criteria um, and after the, the officers have met criteria to have them in the car. And so they'll be able to see firsthand what the police officers are doing when it's not necessarily a controlled environment um, in how they react and, and how they deal with people. And so we're kind of excited about that. Participants are going to meet about twice a month with the first class set for April 12th. Moses Lake police officers serve as advisors for the class, and Sam said the program allows officers to interact with the youth in a positive environment. You know, the police department is here to serve the community, and that's all the community, and that includes young people, older people, um, adults, and, and juveniles. And so this gives an opportunity for uh, the officers to interact with kids that are excited to be around them. Um, it gives the, the kids, these, these high school age kids, an opportunity to see police officers um, in, a, in a relaxed environment, an environment that um, is not um, you know, a, a, a law enforcement contact. Uh, aside from being able to meet with these kids, we also have their parents involved. And so you, you really are getting a, a bigger segment of the community that are getting involved and getting to see the police department, getting to see what we do. You know, I, I imagine the kids will go and tell their parents, who will tell their friends, or, um, and so on. And so you know, the, the community at large will get a good picture of what the police department's doing as well, which is important. I mean, you know, police work is a different type of work um, that is in the public, but the public doesn't always see everything. And so this will give an opportunity for uh, the public to have a, uh, another view into the police department to, to see what we do and, and to understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. Applications are due on March 14th and are available at the Moses Lake Police Department, located at 411 South Balsam Street. Police require the applicants to complete a background screening process and an oral interview before being accepted into the program. The program is funded through various donations made to the Moses Lake Police Department. For more information, contact the Police Department at 509-764-3887. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. We'll be right back after this. Experience speed like never before. When you connect to Grant PUD's high-speed network, visit grantpud.org to learn more. We are real students, and this really is our college. My dream will change the outcome of my life. My college is allowing me to achieve my dream. My dream is to be a pilot. My dream is to be a nurse. Only you can determine your dream. Big Bend will help you get there. What's your dream? Welcome back. An appeals court upheld a 19-year prison sentence for a woman convicted of burglarizing her ex-boyfriend's father's home. The Washington State Court of Appeals rejected arguments from Cicely McFarland's attorneys. A Grant County jury found a 26-year-old Moses Lake resident guilty of burglary in the first degree, 10 counts of theft of a firearm, and three counts of unlawful possession of a firearm. McFarland helped her boyfriend, Chad Faircloth, burglarize the home of her former boyfriend's father in June of 2014, according to court records. The two took 13 firearms along with a television, an Xbox 360, and other items. The victim had taken NyQuil and drank some alcohol before going to bed and didn't hear the two enter the residence. McFarland's attorneys pointed to three potential problems during the trial, including a pre-trial motion ruling, a video of an interview used in trial, and the length of the defendant's sentence. 
In Northwest News, nine Seattle firefighters were injured after an explosion leveled three businesses early Wednesday morning. Firefighters were working a natural gas leak. While they were investigating, Seattle fire officials say the building exploded. The blast sent debris scattered across the neighborhood and shattered windows and buildings as far as two blocks away. Officials say the firefighters suffered minor injuries, including cuts, bruises, and burns. There was no word of any other injuries or anyone missing, but dogs were being used to go through the rubble just in case. Harborview Medical Center spokeswoman Susan Gregg said eight firefighters and a battalion chief were treated at the facility. She said five were treated and released early Wednesday and four others were in the process of being discharged. A woman driving a van that looks like the Scooby-Doo mystery machine led police on a wild car chase this week, causing several collisions before she got away. For CNN, Erica So has the details. It's already an unusual sight, the mystery machine from Scooby-Doo in Redding. <laughs> Images of the van have been circulating on social media after it was involved in a high-speed chase Sunday afternoon. <laughs> The driver wasn't shaggy or threat. It was 51-year-old Sharon Terman. She apparently decided to make a run for it during a routine probation check. Her probation officer called 911 immediately, and officers responded with a little humor. I think it's on Scooby. Terman headed south on California, then to Market, then to Highway 273, speeding the entire time. More officers joined in, needing to know what kind of vehicle they were chasing. It's almost a teal green 90s Dodge Caravan, has yellow paint splattered on the side Look for Scooby Doo nonsense. The mystery machine plowed down Highway 273. At this point, Terman had four units chasing her on the ground and a CHP helicopter above. Other officers started to stage a few miles down when the chase was called off because of safety concerns. Trying to warn him, trying to warn him. Holy cow, she almost just took out a vehicle blue light at about 70. Terman almost caused multiple crashes before she abandoned the mystery machine. And like one of the ghouls in the cartoon series, she vanished. That's going to do it here for us at iFiber One News. We want to thank you for watching and we'll see you again tomorrow.